Hey foodies, let's get into this yumminess. So the star of the show guys is the Kalaloo. So I have this cut up into small pieces because of course this is, um, the stalks on this are a little harder than those of spinach. So we cut them up small so they can cook really easily. So I'm going to be using today some onions and some scotch bonnet and garlic, thyme leaves, tomato, carrots, and some scallion. And you can use sweet pepper if you want. So what we're going to do is just saute everything in oil over medium heat, okay? We want this to be fragrant. We want to soften them a little bit, but we don't want to brown them. So we're doing the onions and then we're going to add the carrots. We'll go in with the garlic and the scotch bonnet as well. If you want to use bigger pieces of scotch bonnet, that's fine. And you can even add some green seasoning if you do have that at home. So after we allow the onion and the carrot to soften a bit, then we can add the tomatoes. And then just keep stirring this. So let's add the scallion and the thyme as well. I'm using the thyme leaves because I don't mind eating it like this. But if you just want the flavor, you can use the whole thyme sprig if you want to and then remove it in the end. So let's add the Kalaloo cut up in some strips so it will cook really quickly. Sometimes the Kalaloo stalks can be super hard, so you can try to cut them smaller. But this was just perfect. I got it at a local West Indian store and it was really nice and fresh. They cooked up super fast. So what we're doing is tossing everything together, then we'll season. So I'm adding some all-purpose seasoning, some garlic powder, and then I'll go in with some black pepper as well. This is all done to taste, guys. This is a vegetable, so if you wanna give it a taste during cooking, it's fine. Um, very, you know, safe. To, to check it out it's not like it's raw meat right so <laughs> and then I'll add some salt of course when I'm doing this with salt fish I don't need to add any salt um, or if I add seasoning it's very minimal right but we're doing this vegetarian today okay so once you're good with the seasoning you can add a whole scotch bonnet just to get that beautiful aroma Cover it over low heat and let it steam for about four minutes. Depending on the type of kalaloo you got from the store, it should be good in about four minutes. Some of them take a little longer. But just try to get those stalks cooked. Those are the parts that are harder to cook. So check on them. And if they are nice and tender, you are good to go. All right. And that's it. Beautiful steam kalaloo. Really, really nice, guys. So we'll set this aside to cool down and work on our dough, all right? So we have some all-purpose flour here, and then we're going to be adding some instant yeast. I like using this because you don't need to activate it. Add some sugar in there, and then we're going to give it a whisk, all right? Just to incorporate things. Add some salt in there, and then give it a mix. So for those of you who've seen my other cocoa bread video, I am doing things a little bit differently today, okay? Using some different ingredients. So we'll make the well in the center there and we're going to add some milk this time. And then we're going to go in with some beaten eggs and melted butter that was cooled down. In my other video, I rub the butter into the dry mixture, but we're going to get beautiful cocoa breads just the same. Grab your spoon and just stir everything together, okay? You can even use your hands if you prefer, but I'm using my wooden spoon today. Just keep stirring it until it comes all the way together. And it's going to be a little soft, but don't fear. Like when you're kneading it, if you need flour, you can add flour. So I have some olive oil on my hands, guys, and I'm just going to pour this out onto the board flour is awesome for preventing sticking but i'm using the oil today because i want this to just remain soft i don't want to add any extra flour in it so fold the dough into itself like this and you're just trying to get a you know a little ball it doesn't have to be a perfect ball 
pour it out onto the board and then what we're going to do is knead it i have the oil on my hands if you need flour definitely dust your board with some flour okay at this point i didn't need any so i'm just going to go ahead with the oil on my hands and knead this for about four to five minutes we're just trying to get a smoother ball and get that gluten development so we just want to you know knead that so turn it and just keep kneading it While kneading it, it's going to get even smoother. If it's perfect after four minutes, no need to keep kneading it. All right. So just form that little ball. We're going to put it in a greased bowl. So I just brushed some olive oil in here. And then we're going to put it inside the bowl. We're going to rub or brush some olive oil on top. And then we'll cover it with some cling wrap. Now when we cover it with the cling wrap or even a kitchen towel, we're just going to let it sit and proof for about an hour or an hour and a half. What we want it to do is to expand. We want it to at least double in size. So while the dough is proofing at room temperature, what I do is I just drain the callaloo because I want to get that extra moisture out since we're going to be putting this in the dough and we don't want the dough to get soggy. Okay, so once the dough has been proofed, we'll just dust a surface, kitchen counter or cutting board and then this is our expanded dough. We're going to punch it down, all right? And this is just to get that excess gas out of there. So we're deflating it in a sense. All right, and then we will turn this out onto the dusted surface. Now there's many ways to do this. You could roll all of this flat and then just put spoonfuls of filling and fold it over and cut out your shapes. But what we're gonna do is just roll that cut it into pieces you can cut it into equal pieces if you want i want two big callaloo loaves and then i'm gonna do some cocoa breads so i will make some of them bigger than some all right so once you have your pieces pick up one and then just fold it into itself that's what you're gonna do it's kind of like when i'm making my fried dumplings fold everything to the center smooth those opened edges out you can pinch them um, roll them under and then you're just gonna set that aside and do that to the other pieces of dough And guys, while you are rolling these dough balls, just keep the others covered. So prevent them from drying out, okay? Use your cling wrap or your kitchen towel. And then you can let these rest for about three minutes. If they're super soft, you might not even have to rest them. Just go ahead and start to press. So we're just trying to make some circles. They might not be perfect, but that's fine, all right? So press that with your hands, and then you can use a rolling pin. All you're doing is rolling this out into circles now if you want them to be on the flatter side then of course keep rolling out until these are much much bigger but if you want your cocoa bread to be thicker then don't roll it out too much it's up to you it's still gonna be tasty all right my color loaves are gonna be on the thinner side and then my cocoa bread is gonna be rolled um, not too thinly all right, so brush with some melted butter. For regular cocoa bread, we would just fold this over, but we're making callaloo loaf with this piece here. So I will be putting the filling inside. You can use as much filling as you want. Just leave those edges for folding over. I'm just using a little bit of filling, all right? So put that filling in there and then have some water or an egg wash and just smooth it along those edges so that this can be sealed once you fold it over and that's it fold it over take it to the edge and then press down to seal it 
And then after you press it down with your fingers, you can use one of your gadgets to neaten or you could just use a fork that's dusted in flour to just pinch to uh, crimp those edges. All right, it just helps to seal it even more. So guys, this color loaf is on the larger side. You can make it smaller if you want. You can um, roll it not as thin if you want it to be super thick. You can put more filling. You could even add other vegetables. You can customize, all right? So once we have filled those and then we rolled out our cocoa breads, we'll let this proof for 25 minutes, okay? And then after 25 minutes, what we'll do is we're going to brush on some milk. This is just going to give help to give it some color, okay? There are many suggestions as far as color when you're making bread or pastry. There's butter, there's egg wash, you know, today we're using milk. So just brush that on and then we're going to bake this at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. The bigger ones might take 25 and then the smaller ones might take 20 minutes. So get those into the oven. Very simple guys. And here we are. So this is our cocoa bread. All right. Really nice and soft. No filling at all in there. Okay. This can be used for sandwiches, it can be eaten on its own. And then of course we have the color loaf that's sealed and it's bigger and a little thinner. And then we'll just open that up and there we are. Beautiful filling inside. I didn't use a lot of filling, you can use much more if you want to. All right, and that's it. Super simple and delicious. You could even freeze these and warm them up for lunch or breakfast really convenient and tasty so give it a try and let me know what you think guys i'll see you next time